She was a pretty, young lady, born as if through an error of destiny, into a family of clerks. She had no means of becoming known. She allowed herself to marry a petty clerk, in the office of the Board of Education. She was simple, but she was unhappy. She felt, that she was born for all good things and luxuries. She suffered from the poverty of her apartment, the shabby walls, and the worn chairs. All these things tortured and angered her, when she seated herself for dinner, opposite her husband. Oh, the good pot pie. I know nothing better than that. She would think of attractive dinners, of shining silver, she thought of the excellent food served in marvelous dishes. She had a rich friend, who was her schoolmate. Madame Forestier. But she didn't like to visit Madame Forestier. Because, looking at her richness, she would suffer. She would cry for days after visiting her friend. One day, her husband came home, with a large envelope in his hand. Here, here is something for you. She quickly drew out a printed card, on which, were inscribed these words. The Minister of Public Instruction, and Madame George Rambineau, ask the honor of Monsieur and Madame Loisel's company. Monday evening, January 18th, at the Minister's residence. M stands for Monsieur, that is, Mr. MME stands for Madame, that is, Mrs. Means, both were invited to the minister's ball, ball, party. Instead of being delighted, as her husband had hoped, Madame Loisel threw the invitation upon the table. What do you suppose I want with that? But, my dearie, I thought it would make you happy. You never go out. And this is an occasion, and a fine one. Everybody wishes one, and it is very select. Not many such occasions are given to employees. What do you suppose I have to wear, to such a thing as that? Why, the dress you wear when we go to the theater. It seems very pretty to me. <laughs> what is the matter? What is the matter? Nothing. Only I have no dress. And consequently, I cannot go to this affair. Give your card to some colleague, whose wife is better fitted out than I. Let us see, Matilda. How much would a suitable costume cost? Something that would serve for other occasions as well. Something very simple? I cannot tell exactly, but it seems to me, that 400 francs ought to cover it. He turned a little pale, because he had saved exactly 400 francs to buy a gun, so that he might be able to join some hunting the next summer with some friends. However, he decided to sacrifice his joy to satisfy his wife. Very well. I will give you 400 francs, but try to have a pretty dress. The day of the ball approached. But Madame Loisel seemed sad, disturbed, anxious, vexed, vexed, annoyed. What is the matter with you? You have acted strangely for two or three days. I am vexed not to have a jewel, nothing to adorn myself with. I shall have such a poverty-stricken look. I would prefer not to go to this party. You can wear some natural flowers. In this season, they look very chic. Chic, fashionable. No. There is nothing more humiliating than to have a chabier in the midst of rich women. How stupid we are. Go and find your rich friend, Madame Forestier, and ask her to lend you her jewels. It is true. I had not thought of that. The next day, she went to her friend's house. I have to go to a party, and I don't have a jewel. Madame Forestier went to her closet, took out a large jewel case, brought it, opened it, and said, Choose, my dear. She tried some jewels before the mirror. Have you nothing more? Why, yes. Look for yourself. I do not know what will please you. Suddenly, she discovered, in a black satin box, a superb necklace of diamonds. Her hands trembled as she took it out. 
she placed it about her throat against her dress, and was ecstatic. Can you lend me this? Only this? Why? Yes, certainly. The day of the ball arrived. Madame Loiselle was a great success. She was the prettiest of all, elegant, gracious, smiling, and full of joy. All the men noticed her, asked her name, and wanted to be presented. She danced with enthusiasm, intoxicated with pleasure, thinking of nothing but all this admiration. This victory so complete and sweet to her heart. Since midnight, her husband was half asleep, in a little salon, with three other gentlemen, whose wives were enjoying themselves. Salon, a large room for guests. He gave her simple wraps. Wrap, a shawl that covered the shoulders. Means, the wraps were so simple, that they clashed with the beauty of her dress. She wished to go home quickly, as she didn't want to be noticed by another woman, who were wearing some rich fur wraps. Wait here. I am going to call a cab. She wouldn't listen, and went down the steps rapidly. There's no carriage. They walked along toward the river, hopeless, shivering. It was about four o'clock in the morning. Finally, they found an old carriage. It took them right to their apartment. I have to be at office by ten o'clock. She removed the wraps in front of the mirror, for a final view of herself in her glory, in the elegant dress. What is the matter? I have, I have. I no longer have Madame Forestier's necklace. What? How is that? It is not possible. And they looked in the folds of the dress, in the pockets, everywhere. They could not find it. You are sure you still had it, when we left the minister's house? Yes, I felt it as we came out. And if you had lost it in the street, we should have heard it fall. No, it must be in the cab. Yes, it's possible. Did you take the number? No. And you, did you notice what it was? No. I am going, over the track where we went on foot, to see if I can find it. And he went, trying to find the necklace. But, he found nothing, and around seven o'clock, he returned. He went to the police to the cab offices, and he put an advertisement in the newspapers, offering a reward to the person who finds the necklace. In the evening, Loisel returned, and he had discovered nothing. I couldn't find it. We need more time. Write to your friend, that you have broken the clasp of the necklace, and that you will have it repaired. That will give us time. Clasp, a piece of metal, that connects two ends of a necklace. She wrote to her friend. For some days, they tried. At the end of the week, they had lost all hope. We must replace this jewel. In a shop of the Palais Royal, they found a necklace of diamonds, which seemed to them, exactly like the one they had lost. How much for this necklace? It is 40,000 francs. You can get it for 36,000 francs. 36,000. Loisel had 18,000 francs which his father had left him. How did they arrange the other 18,000 francs? He borrowed them. He made disastrous promises, took money from usurers, and the whole race of lenders, usurers, who lend money on a high rate of interest. Then, he went to get the new necklace. Madame Loisel returned it to Madame Forestier. You should have returned them sooner, for I might have needed them. Madame Loisel feared that Madame Forestier would open the jewel box. What would she think, if she should perceive that it was a new jewel? What should she say? Would she take her for a robber? Thankfully, Madame Forestier didn't open the jewel box. Problem solved? No. They had to pay the debt. 18,000 francs, with interest. Madame Loisel did her part heroically. They sent away the maid, changed their house, and rented some rooms in the attic, attic, the space between roof and ceiling of the house. She learned the unpleasant work of a kitchen. She washed the dishes, washed the clothes, and hung them on the rope to dry. She took down the garbage to the street each morning, and brought up the water. 
and, dressed like a common woman, she went to the grocers, the butchers, and the fruiterers, with her basket on her arm, shopping, arguing for the last sow of her money, sow, a French coin of low value. And what did her husband do? He worked evenings, putting the books of some merchant in order, and nights, he often did copying, five sous a page. And this life lasted for ten years. They had restored all the debt. Now, Madame Loisel seemed old. She had become a strong, hard woman, simple woman of poor household. Her hair badly dressed, her skirts twisted, her hands red, and she spoke in a loud tone. And sometimes, when her husband was at the office, she would seat herself before the window, and think of that evening party in those days, of that ball, where she was so beautiful, and so praised. How would it have been, if she had not lost the necklace? Who knows? How unique is life, and how full of changes. How a small thing will ruin, or save one. One Sunday, when she was taking a walk in the Champs-Élysées, Champs-Élysées, is a famous road in Paris. She suddenly noticed a woman, walking with a child. It was Madame Forestier, still young, still pretty, still attractive. Madame Loiselle was affected. She is Madame Forestier. Should I speak to her? Yes, certainly. And now that I have paid, I will tell her all. Why not? Good morning, Jean. But, Madame, I do not know, you must be mistaken. No, I am Matilda Loiselle. Oh, my poor Matilda. How have you changed? Yes, I have had some hard days since I saw you, and some miserable ones. And all because of you. Because of me? How is that? You remember the diamond necklace, that you loaned me, to wear to the minister's ball? Yes, very well. Well, I lost it. How is that, since you returned it to me? I returned another to you, exactly like it. And it has taken us ten years to pay for a diamond necklace. You can understand, that it was not easy for us, who have nothing. But it is finished, and I am decently content. You say that you bought a diamond necklace, to replace mine? Yes. You did not perceive it then? They were just alike. Oh, my poor Matilda. Mine were false diamond. They were not worth over 500 francs. What? Means, Madame Loiselle bought a diamond necklace worth 36,000 francs, to replace Madame Forestier's necklace, which was not diamond, and which was not even worth 500 francs. And the Loiselles worked for 10 years to pay the debt. <laughs> What do you think would happen then? Would Madame Forestier return the diamond jewel to Madame Loisel? Would Louisels get the same life they were living 10 years back? Please like and share this video. And subscribe my channel for more such animations. Bye bye.